Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about how I handled it when a traffic light was out in Philly and what that says about something really deep in our society. Now you may think, a traffic light being out, what's the big deal with that? But in this case, it actually gets at something that I think is really profound and has huge impacts on our society. So over the course of my life, I've heard people complain a lot about organizations, and particularly about governments, like city governments, or federal government, or whatever. I hear people say things a lot like, oh, this city people are so incompetent, and it's this big bureaucracy, and the employees in it don't care, and like, blah blah blah, they go on and on. And I think, unfortunately, I picked up a lot of these things that were being said by many different people in my life, and I incorporated them into my thinking in a way that I think was not a particularly good thing. So at any rate, fast forward, I moved to Philly, and I'm living in Philly, and after a few weeks I noticed that there's this traffic light in my neighborhood that's out, like I'm crossing the street and one of the lights is just burned out. Day after day, I cross at this crossing, and it's still out. And here's where this pernicious thinking starts to creep in. I start to have these negative thoughts like, oh my god, this light has been out for so long and no one has come to fix it. Wow, this city is so dysfunctional, like the people who work in it must be so incompetent. And I start having this rant running in my head. Now what's interesting is that that line of reasoning didn't actually lead me to do anything about the problem. When I'm thinking that the city of Philadelphia is dysfunctional, and when I'm thinking that it's just this big bureaucracy populated by incompetent employees who don't care, if that were really true, there'd be no point in me reporting the light being out. So when I was having that narrative in my head, I didn't do anything about reporting the light. Now at a certain point in time, I actually became consciously aware of that narrative. I was actually writing in my journal at the time, and I was like, whoa, I'm actually having these really negative thoughts about the city of Philadelphia, and about its bureaucratic structure, and about the employees who work in it, associated with this traffic light. And when I started examining the thoughts, I realized that they were completely off base, like they didn't have any basis in reality, because it was just, I don't know, it was just this negativity there. And so I was like, I'm going to do something about this light. So I went on the city website. Now by the way, this is months later, so this light has been out for months. So I go on the city website, and I find that there's a streets department that is responsible for uh, fixing traffic lights, and I email them, and I get a very quick response, and it's like, oh hey, uh, thank you so much for letting us know, we'll send someone out to fix it. And the next day I walk by it, and it was fixed. And I was really floored, I was like, wow, that's awesome, they were so fast, like I would not expect them to be that fast in a city as big as Philadelphia. And I started thinking about how my actual experience with them fixing the problem was so divorced from the thoughts I was having in my head. And I was also started thinking about how the thoughts in my head are actually pretty similar to a lot of the things that I continually hear people say about the city of Philadelphia. Like I hear people say negative things about the bureaucratic structure, about the government, and about the employees of the city. And I started thinking about it, and I'm like, this really bothers me, because first of all, it's pretty obvious to me, or it seems really likely that no one else reported that light and that I was probably the first one to report it, and that's why it got fixed so late. And it makes me wonder how many problems around Philadelphia are persisting only because people aren't speaking up about them, and they're these employees who sort of have a job duty to fix these problems, but they just don't know where the problems are, and people aren't telling them because they have this irrational negative view of the city, and of its governmental structure, and of the employees who work in it. And so I started to see this sort of negative dialogue, the negative narrative, as like a real major problem. So 
I hope that this story has drawn attention to the sort of harm that can come from a narrative like this. Now in a case like this, it's just one traffic light, it's not a big deal, but there are some real pernicious problems that exist in cities across America. And I can't help but wonder if some of those problems don't persist because of this culture of negativity that we have of how we talk about the cities and how we talk about their structure and how we talk about their employees. And I want to call on all of you all to start challenging that negativity. And when you see a problem, don't complain about it, don't start bashing people, and don't start bashing governments or cities, but instead do something about it. Like, go and contact someone, see if there's someone who's sort of responsible for fixing that kind of problem, and get in touch with them and be like, hey, there's this problem, can you do something about it? It might not fix every problem, especially problems that are a lot more complex than a traffic light being out, but I think that if we took this approach, it might solve a lot of problems in our society. So I hope that I've challenged some ideas, and I hope that you gain some insight about our culture and the relationship between the culture and like things actually getting done or not getting done. And I hope that this will actually result in more problems getting fixed. Thank you.